Nerds International proudly presents Welcome back to another episode of The Foreign Beggars, a DCC actual play featuring Grimald and Minoc. And this time, I'm going to hide an Easter egg somewhere in the actual play. See if you can find it, listeners. You'll win a prize. Welcome back to our DCC actual play, The Foreign Beggars. Oh boy, am I excited. I've had one beer. I've got one beer. I'm halfway through my first. <laughs> we, we usually record these in the morning, so this is very exciting. It's like a party for us, isn't it? <laughs> the sun good, shines outside. It's a good time, and we're inside yeah. playing games. Yeah, yeah. It's great. But, um, obviously, for those that don't know, this is a DCC actual play featuring the wonderful characters of Nick. Who are you playing today? And my name is Grimald, and I am playing a vagrant obit. And James? Uh, I am playing Minoc, who is an ex herder dwarf. So, let's get the bloody hell on with it, shall we? So last time on The Foreign Beggars, we learned that you guys had uh, caused the biggest chaotic event in the history of the universe. Oops. And the lawful god... Uh, Zovia, she decided to give you a bunch of different missions to do. And the first one you decided to do was to sort out a kind of bickering between two frog gods. <laughs> and now after you'd done that, you got back to the lawful plane and uh, one of the frog gods didn't like the way that you that you did that, the bugbear builds, and he got very angry and started attacking you. Immediately, you accepted another mission and this was to sort out the um, evil, evil guy, Cutthroat Jenkins. He's been, he's taken over a village, he's destroyed it, and he's been holding death races there, uh, and he's, he's got this big team that he's hired, and it's, it's just absolutely gone to shit. As the last episode ended, you guys had two massive carts heading towards you that were in a death race. One of them had Cutthroat Jenkins atop it. That's where we're gonna start today's adventure. You were teleported by the ultimate goddess of law, Zovia, to the outskirts of a burned-out husk of an oddly familiar village. A large sign which has been crudely painted over with new texts reads, Jenkerton. But for now, these are the only details you manage to take in, because two carts led by hideous babiked monsters speed towards you at the sandy periphery, while onlookers in patchwork armour holding aloft jagged weaponry cheer with glee. As the rightmost cart nears you, its rider, Cutthroat Jenkins, screams, What the fuck? You two! And skids his barbed wagon to a halt, inches from your faces, covering you both in a gigantic wave of sand. <coughs> oh, 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 hell. oh, Stop the death race! Stop the death race! He yells to the other rider. The onlooking crowd seem disappointed. Yeah, stop the death race. He, he stands up on the top of his wagon, looking at you two, and he's like, what the hell are you two doing here? With that baby. Well, you know I'm gonna have to capture you and put you in me dungeon, don't you? Um, yeah. no. Look, lots changed since uh, our little uh, indiscretion with yourself back in uh, Fanning Town. Uh, how about we let bygones be bygones? Yes, yes, this is a great idea, great idea. I don't know what a bygone is, but I am willing to bet it means I'm going to have to spike on you right in the face. Ramrod, come over here. And he points to the other guy on, on the car, and it wheels around, this hideous monster bringing it round to where you guys are stood. And he's like, he's like yep, yep, yeah, that's it, come over here. Okay. What the hell is that? Oh, God. I'm going to get off of my cart now, and if you guys try anything funny, Ramrod here is going to shoot you full of repeating crossbow bolts. Um... Uh, oh, oh, um, probably, probably won't do anything. When you say funny, you mean like what, pop a joke or something, or like? No, I, d- uh, grim, 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 grim. I wasn't expecting you to do a comedy routine. What I mean is, if you do anything I don't like, I'm not the type of man who likes a joke. And when I mean a joke, I mean 
trying to hit me or trying to bum me or anything like that. Or trip you up. <coughs> or trip me up. Yes, thanks for reminding me, Minor. Oh, mind it, for God's When you set me in flying into that table head first. That was a misunderstanding. I oh. had concussion for a week. Well, I, I... I couldn't even remember where my pans were in my house. I tried to cook a meal using a flippin' shoe. Look, my hair, the hairs on my feet were untied. I had to tie them back up again. And you see him jump down off of his car. And he gets the butt of his axe and he just tries to smash you in the face with it. But give me a fortitude save, please. Eleven. The butt smash is so unbelievably strong that you feel just this echoing go through your head like there's sort of marbles in your skull. Oh, oh, oh. oh leave him alone. And Minoc hits the floor like a sack of rocks. Oh. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try pick my, pick my mate up. Yeah, mate, come on, come on. Don't, you, my old don't you touch him, Grimmauld. It'll be what? you next. No, I don't want to get, I don't want to get acquainted with your axe, all right? Well, it's funny because I think you're about to. And he goes to smash you as well. Give me a fortitude save. Twenty. <laughs> you get the same smack in the face. You feel your nose break in three oh. places because he also got a crit. Um, however, when he does so, you don't actually get knocked out. You just stand there, your face feeling like you've been hit by a running wagon. And he's like, "I, oh, you're a strong one, Gribbled. I always said that about you." I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of falling down. <laughs> Shut up and take your lumps. <laughs> he gives you another smash to the face. Oh. Give me another fortitude save. Uh, 15. Oh, God. And he's like, oh, you think you can stand up for much longer? Just go down, you little prick. Uh, fine, I'm going to drop down to one. <laughs> he smashes you in the face one final time. Give me a fortitude save again. Free. <laughs> this time, you feel yourself get knocked out. And, and you guys feel this just blackness envelop you as his mighty blows just destroy your consciousness. You both awake in cells, separate cells. Minoc, yours is cold and miserable. No windows or torches illuminate the near darkness. You lay on a downward slope against the wall, but about ten inches deep in a foul-smelling, warm, chunky water. <sighs> You're going to need to give me another fortitude save, Minoc. Oh. oh, my face, what is, what's happening here? Seven. You are instantly sick. You realise that you are laying in the feculence of many prisoners. Oh, 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 oh God. Grimald, conversely, you awake in a cell, similarly low in temperature on a similarly cold floor, and your cell is obviously sloping downhill too. But you awake laying against the mossy bars of your new dark abode. A small skeleton lies next to you. The top of its skull has a wide hole in it. Where at? Where, where at? Oh, uh, uh, uh. You've just heard your friend be sick, and as you glance over, you can see a shadowy form sort of moving in the darkness. I recognise that wretch! Miney! Uh, Is that you, Chundering? Ah, uh, you are, uh, Grim. Yeah, it's me. It's Grim here. No, I'm Grim. Grim's here. It's me. Uh, are you alright, Miney? Why uh, are you throwing up? Uh, oh, God, help. I can't. Where are you? I think I can see you across the way. Is that you, Shadow Boy? That's, that's me, but this place is disgusting. Well, I've got I've got a skeleton sitting next to me with a hole in his head. I'm sitting in bits of dead. All right, you win. I can <laughs> think I can smell it. Jeez, is that is that what I think it is? Uh, <laughs> is is that is that Poe? Uh, everything, everything is here. Wow. Everything. All right, calm down. Take a deep breath. Remember, like we used to do in the woods. Right. 
I ain't gonna lie, my face feels about eight times bigger than it was about, however, well, when before I fell asleep. So, <laughs> I definitely think Jenkins has rearranged me a little bit, but I'm rest assured I can see out of an eye. Jenkins rearranges all of us. But you can hear from the cell next to you, Grimald, um, and opposite Minoc, that there is a voice. Hello, voice. Hello. Hello. My name is Mirael Wolseley. Mirael Wolseley. Oh, uh, that's a... That's a big name. That's a fine name. It is Elven Cutthroat Jenkins. He does not like elves. I don't think he likes much of anything, if I'm honest with you. Except for hurting people. Maybe it is his stupid voice that people dislike. <laughs> I'll have to agree with you there. I mean, what is that? Oh, look at me! What, what is that? <laughs> Do you really think this now is the time for laughter and jokes? Not really, but if I don't do that, I'll cry. Oh, well, that is a shame because I have many jokes. Let's get out of here first. My mate over there, he's not doing so good. He's in a, in some, oh, I don't even want to know, some kind of soup. Uh, well, soup? Uh, as you may know, this dungeon was badly built by idiots. It slopes downwards. So every time I go pee pee or poo poo, it falls down. <laughs> so. That I'm to your friend, my sincere apologies. Please, no more. Look, where are we? Oh, wise one. It is not a holiday camp. <laughs> a what now? It is not the Bahamas. <laughs> you're, not, you're not exactly an educated man, are you? Well, it depends what way you look at that, really. I mean, no. No, you're right, I'm not. Who am I kidding? Okay, put it this way. We're in a fucking prison dungeon thing. Oh, I hadn't had guessed with the bars. Yeah, but I mean, where is this prison located? Look, I do not know where we are. I was simply being escorted from one village to another. You see, I'm a great nobleman, and as such, I'm under threat constantly. And you see, when my litter was attacked by Jenkins, it was a great surprise to me. Apparently, the world is in some sort of apocalypse. Apparently, I heard that a, a massive, massive amount of monsters from the Chaos Realm came into this world. I uh, do not know why, nobody knows why, no. but uh, Jenkins, this bad man, has taken advantage of this and is now using it for his own gain. Um. Yes, we don't know about that either. We heard about it. We heard, heard, business, terrible heard business. about it. Word of mouth. Anyway, what? moving on. Um, moving on. Look, listen. Thing is, Jenkins was never a nice bloke to start with. And now this, know this man. We have met before. Oh no. I'm afraid to say. He's he's quite the nasty piece of work. He's a piece of shit, is what he is. Hmm. Cunt probably is a good better oh, word. Oh, there's no need to go that low. Man. I have not heard this word before. Can't. You mean he can't do anything? Yes. Because he is too bad. Exactly. Yeah, yes. Exactly. That's it. That's yes, the one. Yes. So you're a nobleman, are you? Huh? Yes, I am. I am a nobleman. Oh, I remember when I was a nobleman. Oh, God, here we go. Ah, you are a noble too. Ah, yes. We've got to well, compare diamonds or something. When we get shut up, peasant, so, when we get out, perhaps uh, I will have you round for high tea and, and some croquettes. Well, my peasant friend... Uh, we'll have to we'll have to accompany me. Ex knight on the Ezen pay, alright? I I do not speak his language, but mm, you see we do not allow the lesser classes in the um in my manse. Now he's calling me small. I'm getting the ump here, Marnie. Yeah. Well you do understand that I used to be a noble man, but now I am the lesser class. Ah I rewalk my offer. No, still okay. round the tea. Let's just talk about... Me and Grim. No, let's just... Lots uh, of food. No, shut up. Please. No, shut up forever. Let's just talk about getting out of here. Could we just ponder that thought a bit more? It made me happy. It made me forget about okay, the... Okay, yes, yes, yes. Let's all get out, have tea, yes. Okay, but now let's talk about getting out. I like your thinking. we got to get out of this shit out. Oh, please, quickly. Right, is, it, is there perhaps a hacksaw in your cell? I mean, it is a tall order, but maybe. <laughs> no. Well, I, can't, I, I don't really want to feel around, to Just be honest. Just have a feel. Oh, I feel like something's going in me. Oh. That might be an eel or something. Ah! Stop crying!
lying. Shut up. Yes. Yeah, come Shut on, up. Get it Shut together, up. mate. Come on. Look for this axle. Uh, uh, See if there is a saw. Maybe someone left one lying around. Okay. <laughs> Mona is going to hit. He's going to feel around. Gross. All right. Give me a perception so roll, please. Gross. 20. You feel around your cell, your foot and stump sloshing around in the stenchful feculence. Ugh. Once your hands reach the westerly wall, you feel some protrusions. Some of the clay loafs used to construct your chamber are not flush like the others. These protuberances, arranged neatly as if purposeful, number four in total and glow with a strange tiny writing as you run your stubby dwarven fingers over the cold stone. Uh. Uh. What is it? Uh, what we found? Grimald, you can see, every time he runs his hands over one of these, you can see his face illuminating in the darkness. Oh, I see ya! <laughs> Mine! Do that again, I can see your, your beautiful face glowing in the darkness. What? what you mean this? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, as much as this is fun, is it actually doing anything? <laughs> what you found? What you found? What's that glowing <laughs> thing? <laughs> I, I, I can't read it. What is it like writing then? Uh, I think so, some kind of stuff. Okay, well look, whenever you touch it, it illuminates your face. Well, let's have a look around then. I'm going to rub r- rub it whilst I run my fingers and look around the grossness that I'm sitting in. Oh, noble man. Yes? No. Ha ha, very funny. Oh, other noble man. Yes. Have you ever heard of uh, illuminating uh, loafs? It's bricks, you idiot. Oh, <laughs> look. The, it, is, it is likely that the dialect was written in a dialect that you do not understand. Well, I know, I know, I know me some dialects, all right? Well, what languages do you speak, ex noble man? Uh, well, of course, you know, dwarven, common, ogre. You speak ogre? Oh, how did you come to speak ogre? No, it doesn't matter. Look, um, what, how big is the writing? Uh, about this big? Oh wait, you can't see me. It's 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 uh pretty small, pretty small. So do you think it was written by an ogre, stupid? Well, you're the one who asked me what I could speak. I just answered Why the question. You shut up for a minute. We're trying to get out. Did uh, you find the fucking hacksaw or not? No, I found these glowing writing bricks. Right. I don't think it's any of the languages you speak if you don't understand it, so you're fucking useless. Look, why didn't you get put in the right cell? Look, I can use these bricks now to look better. How about that? It's annoying. It doesn't get us out. I can, can look put, better. You can put on a light show. Oh, well done. It's it's quite nice yeah. in this in the when it's you know considering the, the, the situation we're in. You, yeah, other guy. Yeah. What is your name? Grim. 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 Yes, Grim. Grimald. Can you see the writing from where you are? It's too tiny. I can't see the writing. Huh. Listen, yeah. Miney, Miney, how small are we talking? Because, you know, well, could it be a pixie wrote it? Um, well, uh, quite possibly. I mean, it's, it's a minuscule, the writing. I do speak pixie, you know, Mr. Nobleman. I'm not that dumb. I lost a bet once. Why do you speak such fucking weird outlandish languages? Well, it was a, it was a, it, 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 it was either a fight or learn pixie I lost. Anyway, don't worry about it too much, but I'm fluent in pixie. Okay. Grimald, I will now describe the writing to you, okay? Do it. Now pay close attention. I'm all ears. Close attention. Minoc, give me a intelligence roll to see if you can uh, describe it to him, Will. Nine. For the first one, you describe the runes to him somewhat accurately. So, Grimald, you think that it probably says either bash, mash, or crush. From what you're telling me, it sounds like it could be either mash, crash, or bash, crash, or crush. Okay. So? The next one is... 15. From Minox's description, you guess that it definitely says bed golem. Bed... Look at that. What you've just described to me says bed golem. What? Bed golem. Oh, oh, okay. Next one coming up. Bed golem? 15. Yeah, the next one, uh, from Minox's description, it appears to say open... Also powerful lightning magic. Also, also powerful... Right, well that last one says open, also powerful lightning magic. That's that's weird. Um, these are all weird. But the last one, uh, 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 it looks like this. Ten. Okay, so from his description, you guess that this one probably says something along the lines of flaming sword, flying sword, homing sword, 
or smashing sword? Some sort of a sword. The first bit's a little bit iffy, but it's definitely sword. Nobleman, any input? You know I have a fucking name. My name is Mirael. Mirael, Mirael. Mirael Woolsley. Just call me Woolsley if you want. It is a human name. Woolsley, all right. I, I had human parents. I was adopted, you see. I was a foreigner in a strange land. I grew up begging and then I was adopted from the streets. Adopted? Yes. I can relate to that. I was adopted too. You see, I used to beg on the streets of a place called Fanning City. What? It was awful. I had to beg all the time. What? Homeless I was. That's... this was many, many years that's, ago, of course. That's where that's where we originated. We Wait. picked up your torch. No that's way. What we do. It's no our job. You all come from Fanning City, and we're beggars. We used to beg down Poppleton Lane. It was our favourite spot. Poppleton? Yeah. What? Uh, you mean uh, near um, Morgan's Bar? Of course. Our favourite oh. spot. It's the best bar on the, in the whole city. Yeah, yeah, the the yeah. drinks, they taste like crap, but we go there anyway. Oh, yeah. Oh, they were terrible drinks. Oh, man, such good times. We're like brothers who we didn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> I like you guys anyway. You know, despite my voice, I am actually only six years old. Uh. Well, so, I didn't see that coming. So what? what? <laughs> you need to cut down on them cigarettes, mate. <laughs> no, it's the air in Fanning City. That is not good for the lungs. Hey, Stu, I ain't got the uh, softest of tones either. Wait, how old are you guys? Uh, I forget. Um, uh, Last time I... Well... Well, I'm at least... I've got to be in my... I'm at least 20-something. Uh, hold on. Look, it no matter. So what are we going to do about these, these strange writings? Well... Um, I say you press one of them. I like it. I don't think you should press the one that has anything to do with Gollum at the end. I like the sword one. I like the open one. Oh, yes. Ah. <laughs> Good shot. I'll press that. Okay. You press in the brick, and as you do so, it makes a neat sliding sound as it goes into the wall. And then you see the words de-illuminate. Suddenly, you are zapped with a powerful, powerful lightning magic. <laughs> You are going to take 12 damage as all of the water in your cell is electrified Uh, by something in the walls. You don't know where it came from, but your entire body is zapped momentarily. Oh, I feel weird. Suddenly your door is now open though. It swings open. (coughs) Oh. (coughs) Marty, the door's open. Uh, You've done it. Bye. I mean, okay. Next, next brick. Good work, mate. I think the sword's a good idea. Uh, I'll press the sword brick. Okay, give me a reflex save, uh, please. F- f- 20. A- as you press the brick in, a little chamber on the ceiling opens up, and a sword with wings flies out. It shoots towards the floor and towards you, and just hits the floor with a clanking sound as you jump out the way. You now have a long sword. Yay! Yes. Um, I'm going to pick it up, uh, and then my knock's going to go over to... Grim cell and crowbar open with the sword. No, no, do me first. Do me first. Uh, do me first. I'll get out of here. We've only just met. I'm obviously going to do my friend first. Okay, give me a strength roll. 18. You jam the sword into the bars, and as you do so, you, you just really, really crank it up, and this rusty old crappy sword just breaks immediately. Ah, uh, well, this is annoying. Never mind. Good try. Right, let me see if I've got some buttons in here. Okay, give me a perception roll to look around your cell, please, Grimald. Uh, that's 15, mate. As you search around your cell, Grimald, you feel around the damp clay, tapping on the walls, looking for any irregularities or anything that may help you out of your captivity. At once, you come to a tiny hole in the wall where you feel a rolled piece of paper sticking out from within. The note is written in Hobbit. Fair having. It reads as follows. Curse this fucking dungeon. I always told Mayor Pale Light that we didn't need a bloody prison in an Hobbit village. After all, the last crime to happen in Higgin Boldum on Sea was when Lucky Jacob drank that pint down Olive's pub and didn't pay for it. And that was already worth chucking him in a dungeon for. At least that's what Lucky Jacob said as they dragged him down here. Anyway, now look, the world's coming to an end. Monsters are bloody everywhere, and our own bloody dungeon's being used against us. I always told Mayor Pale Light that we should learn Kung Fu instead of dancing all the time. Anyway, if you're unfortunate enough to be reading this, I've figured out a way out of this dungeon. Death. 
after I got chucked down here by that madman Overlord Jenkins, I didn't see them again, ever. So it's the only way. I'm going to run into this wall as fast as I can. God bless. See you in the great field in the sky, my hobbit brothers. Regards, Tartus the Swift. This can't be true. I must be, I must be, I'm a... Mind it, mind it, am I holding a bit of paper in my hand, or is this an illusion in my eyes? No, you've got a bit of paper in your hand, I can see it, yes. Read it to me. No, you can't read of it. No, it can't be true. No, it can't be true. What? What happened? I think... I've, if this note is correct, then we're in my own old hometown. And Lucky Jacob is my childhood friend. And I was taken away from everything. Could it be true? Could it be my homecoming? This is all well and good, but, um, any progress on breaking out? I mean, is the paper, is yeah. it like, I, is ha, it Have magic? some respect. No, I'm a little bit emotional. Have some real. respect. Just give him a minute. I've just give had a literal blast from the past. Okay, okay, let's, let's take a minute. <sighs> Bloody hell. Right, okay. Okay, that's a minute, isn't it? Okay, is it magic paper? Is it turning to lockpick? Okay, I'm going to lick it. No, I don't think it is. I think it's just paper. Minoc is going to use the sharp end of the sword, the half, and uh, try and open Grimm's cell with it, like a lockpick. Give me an intelligence roll for that, because that is sort of a skilled roll. 16. The cell pops open. Mm. This is a crudely badly made lock made by hobbits who barely know what they're doing. I'm going to walk over to Mirael's cell and I'm going to smash his lock open as well. I'm going to help. Do you mean smash it open? Lock pick it with the sword. Okay, okay. Give me, sword give me, pick. Give me an intelligence roll again. <laughs> Five. He's like, oh, great job. Oh, look. Sorry, I forget my roots. Yeah. Hey, fellow begging brother, why not you try again? You do such a great job. Look, if you keep this up, I'll just leave you here. I'm, tr- I'm actually trying to get you out. I don't have to, do I? Sorry. Yeah, he's I'll try, I'll try again. Six. Okay, I am. Um, my patience is wearing thin. You yeah. can do this. We've got all the time in the world. Days. We don't have all the time in the world. Well, I, I suppose we do try again. No, but look, Jenkins might be back soon. We need to get out of No, here. you read the note. Wait. The other guy, he fucking died. He turned into a skeleton. How long it take to do that? True. Just, just, just keep, speak just keep trying dead. until we die. Twelve. Uh, once again, you try again, and the lock is just not budging. It's like, <laughs> no. you know what? We are going to turn to a fucking skeleton, aren't we? I know it. I hate my, I hate my shitty existence. Focus, Miney. Come on. Come on, focus, Miney. Uh, I think I'm a bit woozy from all the sludge. Uh, uh, could uh, Grim, you take a go. Give me that lock picking sword. A uh, two. Oh, it's a lot harder than it looks. Yes, it's, 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 I think he's got the wrong tone for the job. Trying, trying to pick a lock with a fucking sword. It's, it's funny how hard it can be. Look, just go. Hopefully there will be dynamite up there or, I don't know, a, a magic wand. I, 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 I don't know. Don't feel right leaving him down here. He's only a kid. Good point. Um, Is there anything else around here in this shit old dungeon that we can maybe find to help us? He points, he points over, and you can see a set of double wooden doors. And he's like, look, through there, there might be something. Maybe, a, maybe that's the key room. And they are horribly, the, these doors are horribly bowed and misshapen, bloated by years of dampened mould. So have a look at these old manky doors, see if they open. Well, I'm going to try and open the door. The prom- promise to me you will come back. Of course we will, kid. Yes, we'll come back. I'm a lot of things. Well, I ain't a child abandoner. Mm-hmm. 
As you push through the double doors, you enter a chamber painted with dried blood. A highly damaged pool table holding only three remaining balls and snapped pool cues remains. Some armchairs are scattered around the room, although very few stand on their feet. A drinks cabinet containing only a scant few empty carafes can be seen on the opposite side of the room, as well as a metal door with a heavy looking lock on it. You guess that this may once have been some sort of guard's recreation room, but now it looks like an abattoir with every wall and the ceiling covered in stinking hardened viscera. From behind the pool table, a person stands up, holding an angry looking pointy spear. The man is tall, muscular, has green skin and gigantic, cuspid teeth that protrude from his mouth, giving him an animalistic appearance. He shakes the spear at you. Get back! He looks nervous, shifting around in his plate armour. Don't back. you come not gonna, don't you come in a cuffs. Uh, um, my, uh, goes, Ah! Oh, are, are you an Elga? No, man, no. No, I'm Oak. Oh. I'm a bloody Oak, mate. Damn it. But don't come close, Elga. I'm on the wrong list to kill you. I don't want to bloody do it. Both of you give me perception rolls, please. Ten. Eight. Minoc, you notice that this man underneath his armour is wearing some sort of weird collar. Um, and you can see bits of it protruding up. This collar has this sort of strange illumination on it. And he, he's like, I don't, I don't want to have to kill you, but I will do it. I will, I will bloody do uh, it. What, what's, what's that shiny neck, neck bracelet? Don't you work better? I'm not supposed to tell you about that. Uh, you know one needs to die today. The, the Overlord, he sees all. He sees all. Oh, Jenkins. Get back in cell, please. Uh, please. And he, he, you see him just reach into his armour and he pulls something out. And it's a picture of him. He's not wearing armour, but he's smiling. And in one arm, he's got a little little green boy. And the little boy is smiling. And next to him is, is, a, is a woman wearing a fancy dress and despite her green appearance and large teeth she's actually quite pretty and they're standing in a field smiling and he's like this painting this me my wife my child Lo lovely family picture that's Over beautiful overlord he tell me if i defend dungeon eventually i can see them again how long ago i i know no but eventually please no i know when to fight it I know one die. Look, we don't want to fight you either. How about you pretend you ain't seen us, you carry on doing your great job, and then you'll get to see your lovely family, and we'll just nip out like we was never here. Uh, I think you forgot. Uh, he no, said he no. said he sees everything. No pretend. Yeah, but he might be saying that. Overlord see everything. Come yeah. on, we've been through enough. We know that that kind of stuff happens. All right, fair enough. Let's go back into the cells. Overlord, big ball in sky. Big b what? Big ball in sky. What big hot ball in the sky? Sometime hot. We'd like the sun. In summer hot. I've got news for you, mate. That's the sun. No, no sun. And at night time it's cold, is it? Sometimes. That's the moon. No, no moon. No sun. Big ball in sky. It's a... Uh... Well, that's the overlord all the way up there in the sky. No, no. Misunderstand. Thunderdome. What? What? I want yeah. to go back, see family. Stay back, I know and kill. Overlord, he see all. Please, I can no let leave. Are you the only guard here? Yes. Do you sleep, Ember? I no reveal if I sleep. <laughs> That's fine. <right. laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> you exploit weakness, which I know no, have. I will do that. No, I no have weakness, though. Now you're struggling, young man, look at you. Okay, well, we're just gonna go... We'll just pop back. Go back. And pretend that this never happened. Oh, shut the doors. Be a good prisoner. Have a good day. All right, bye. Thank you. We shut you them. have saved me and family. We shut them. Stay there. No, 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 wait. Stay there forever, though. Yeah, we'll yeah. stay there okay, forever. Yeah, yeah, forever. Now give me a personality roll to see if he's convinced. 13. 15. Thank you. By doing me this favour, you save family. You save wife. Ugg Krug Bub. And you save baby, Grub Thrub Nub. <laughs> what was your name again? My name, Apollo Hogan. Uh, okay, okay, back up to ourselves then. Not good little prisoners. Uh, 
um, Mariah Wolseley. He looks at you and, he, and he's like, Oh my god, you're back so soon? Did you get dynamite or perhaps a magic lock opening device? Uh, guys, we found someone. Yeah. We found a god. His uh, interesting name, Apollo Hogan. Yeah, Apollo so Hogan. So his name is really unimportant. But well, his, yeah, so, well, it's different to his sons, which right. is Shab, Shrab, Grab, Nub. You killed him, you got the keys, yes. we're escaping. We did that, but we're just gonna, just gonna, just, no, we didn't do any of that. No, see, he caught us off guard with his picture of his family. He got a little painting out, it was quite emotional. And, oh God, we felt rotten, so we backed off. But rest assured... We have considered murder. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, this is a step in the right direction. Look, what we, what really we're going to try and do is, right, wait until he sleeps and then sneak past him. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, that could work. We need to get you out first, though, Woosley, because if we've got to sneak past this bloke, we ain't coming back to this shit, so I must be honest. Okay, try one more time. We've really got to get his boy out. Why not we'll try it one more time? Um, 20. <laughs> yes! You try the lock picking one more time and he, you see that Wolseley, he looks at you and he's like, Oh my god, I thought it would never, I would never see the day. Okay. Oh, this is like, oh my god. Ha, wha, I don't even know how to express. It is like, it is like hair one. You are my. It is like, you know, when you go to the lawful plane. Hell one. Oh, you mean heaven? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> you paid that. It, it's the Elvish accent. Ah, yeah, it's Elvish. Right, look, good, now good you're out. You in the mood for uh, killing a family, man? Well, Young man? Well, hang oh, on. You about, know it, girlfriend. Hang about Grimmauld. Wait, we need to get our freedom back. Wait. Family man or no family man? Stop, if, stop a minute. You, stop a you minute. Stop, you stop. Every person has his mother and father. Fuck the guy. Uh, we he's, don't. he's imprisoning us. We kill him. We tear his throat from his body and we chuck it in a ditch. As you don't have a mum and dad. You're orphan as well. Oh. None of us here have a mum and dad. So what are you talking about? Look, just Exactly. Hang on. So we need to fuck him in the ditch. No. No. This is what we're going to do, all right? Because it's, it's definitely the nicest thing to do. We'll just wait. Until he sleeps. And then fuck him in the ditch. And then... <laughs> yeah, we, we figured out the second bit out after he nods uh, off. Okay, we, we, what we do, we escape the prison, we go, we wait for him to sleep, we sneak past, and then we fuck him <laughs> in the ditch. Uh, no, we just go and leave and leave him. Because then he will all, always think that we're in there. But, you, you see, mind me, I don't understand... The bit where we kill him and tear his throat asunder and sacrifice it to the lawful gods for his crimes. <sighs> well, to be honest with you, I think he's—I un- don't think he wants to be here any more than we do. He hasn't really committed crimes. He's the victim in this situation. He kept us prisoner. Right, right, do you want under- to go back in that cage? He's under duress, isn't he? Not particularly. All right. Well, I suggest you think a little bit longer before you <laughs> carry on talking, because Ogan's all right. But at the same time, if we are in my own hometown, I need to see what has become of it, and I need to get out of here. If All Lucky right. Jacob is still alive, then I need to speak to him. I don't see what this has to do with the guard upstairs. The we note, need- mate. The note. All right. We, we meant to- a lot. I don't fuck the note. I need to kill that guy upstairs. He kept me here for all this time. How, how long have you been here? Like a week. Oh. It's been hell, man. I mean, come on. Did he give you food? No. Ah, oh, shit. Is anyone else passed through this prison whilst you've been resident here? No. So it's just been you until S- we were here? Exactly, it's been really boring. Who like, put us in here? Longest week ever. Uh, well, who's that guy? Um, the one with the bucket on his head. Oh, well, that ramrod character. Yes, he is Jenkins right, or a hand man. Horrible looking fella, bucket on his head. That's uh, him. Oh, God, right, okay. Ugly prick. And how long were we out for? Oh, I don't know, like 10 minutes, I don't know. Okay, alright. Okay. I'm just wasting time because I don't want to murder the family man. I will do it. Give me the half sword. Wait, no, wait. Just at least wait until he's asleep. Let's at least give him some peace in the comfort of his dreams. Alright. So, we bet, well, is there any way we can... How will we know when he's asleep? 
Uh, surely we'll hear him snore, right? Will one of you go and stand by the door and listen? I point at the um, Wolseley and I say, not him. Now he's got a voice like a shovel eating rocks. And he really has a big murderous intent. I'll do it. Uh, Manuk is going to volunteer to do that. Stand guard and listen out until he sleeps. Minoc, give me a perception roll to listen at the door. 14. It's a good couple of hours, but you sit there listening and you can hear Apollo Hogan shuffling around in there. But after a good couple of hours, you do hear the shuffling kind of stop. I'm going to move away from the door and back to these guys and then go, right, guys, he shuffled around for ages. And honestly, I almost fell asleep listening to him, but I think he's now fallen asleep because the shuffling stopped. Okay, so what are we going to do? Now we've got to get real sneaky like. Yes. I vote to Grim must go first. What is he like? I've already started going. Grim, give me a stealth roll to sneak up. Uh, 14. You open the big wooden doors. Mm -hmm. And as you get in there, you can see that he is asleep on the bloody pool table. Uh, I'm going to, um, I'm going to motion that he's asleep to the other guys, basically. Um... And then, like, kind of beckon them over silently with my hands. Minoc, do you want to try and sneak up? Yes. 19. All right. And now, Wolseley is going to try the same. Oh, please. Come on, mate. As he goes up the stairs, you see him just tumble over his own feet. And he's like, oh, fuck, shit. Oh, no. Ah. Quick, dart under the dart under the pool table. Okay. I... Oh. Oh, no. Not you, you, us. You see him fall over. <laughs> and as he does so, he falls smack bang on his face. And he's like, I tried, I don't know. And then Apollo Hogan wakes up and he, he's like, what are you doing? I just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Yeah, oh, I don't know. I did not know it was my birthday. Ha- happy birthday. I'm going have to murder you now. <laughs> no. Everyone roll initiative. <laughs> First up on the order is going to be Minoc. What do you want to do? Like I said, we're just here just only to wish you a happy birthday. And now we're going to go back into our cells. So give me a persuade roll, please. Twelve. He doesn't buy it for one second. And he looks at you and he goes, I have killed now. You disobey. And if I don't kill now, they see me. Overlord Jenkins in big orb on sky. Okay, so now I'm going to attack him. Uh, 15. And you swing the half sword at him, barely scraping his skin, doing a flesh wound. And he's like, no. Sorry, no, there was a bug on you. I was just getting off. I disbelieve. He oh, swings yeah. round, picking up his spear from the pool table and jabs it at you angrily. Ow! Oh, I said I was sorry. He hits. He does eight damage to you. Fuck. His spear smashing into your neck. Okay, next is going to be Grimald. Now you've gone and done it. You've hurt me, friend. Well, you hurt my feelings. Well, look, <laughs> we didn't mean to do that, but we've both got an issue. You need to keep us here, and we need to get out of here. If I not kill family die. Look, I'm going to break it down to you. Alright, and then after that, if you still feel the same, then fair play. But there's a very, very, very strong possibility that Overlord Jenkins has already slain your family long time ago, and he's mugging you off by keeping you down here. What? I, 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 I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you've got to think about it rationally, my friend, my green friend. He talk correctly. He is a terrible, terrible man, and the, the likelihood of this happening is, is quite high. Okay, Grim will give me a personality roll, please. Uh, 13. You mean... my family... they might already dead be? They might already be waiting for you. On the other side. Oh, you mean other side of door? Other side of death. I need go kill Jenkins now. Yes. And you see him run towards the door. And as he does so, he runs towards the heavy metal door. And he tries to unlock it. As he does so, the collar around his neck instantly explodes with arcane energy. Making his giant head explode like a gigantic upset tub of jelly. Oh! I think I've got a bit of him on me. Well, that was one way to do it. He done it to himself, though, let's be fair, bless him. I don't feel too 
morally ashamed. That about might anybody. be the quickest combat encounter in history. <laughs> uh, well, well, wouldn't be so sure, but yes. And they still think I'm thick now, little one. You didn't do that on purpose. Of course I did. That's called a that's called a grim old mine lock. I thought he was my knock. Yeah, <laughs> good one, little squirt. Come on, I ruffle his hair. You notice now that the big metal door has been blown open somewhat. Wee. Though. So um, that is somewhat fortuitous. Is he's um, can I grab his spear? I was about to say, is his spear still in one piece? No, the spear has been blown to pieces. Okay. Uh, can I pick up the end if it's still about? If yes, the spearhead is mm-hmm. still there, Sweet. so you can pick that up. Put okay. that in your inventory. Micro knife mark two. Hey, oh mate, have this. You like you you, you only go with a blade? No. All right, look. All we got to do is point the tip. The, in the direction of the person that you don't like and then eh, eh, eh. little prod job done okay I will take the spearhead give it here there you go okay thank be you. careful the shot right shall we get the fuck out of this horrible room of death uh, of course like it <laughs> onward you go out of the metal door and leave the break room the grisly scene thankfully behind you In front of you, the heavy metal door opens to a stone stairway. This long passage of stairs leads up and up and further up to a point of light. I I Jenkins the ball of light. Yes, me too. Jenkins, the last time I checked, he was a man. I know what he was talking about back there, then. Quite correct, yes. He's obviously not very smart like me. I know two times table, four times table... I'm still working on five times table. Okay. Oh. Bless you. Right, um... Mm. Off, off to the uh, slaughter then, I suppose. I, I suppose we should go up. Well, who, who is the toughest of all of us? I think it is you, dwarf. He's got a point. He does. We gave him the spear, spearhead. He's got a spearhead. He'll keep an eye on the back. I'll keep an eye on the middle. You keep an eye on the front. Right, here I go. Follow me. You walk up the stairway, and it goes on for a very, very long time. This is an inordinate amount of stairs, leading up and up and up. Both of you give me a stamina roll, please. 14. 16. You guys are fine, and in fact, Wolseley is fine too. As you approach the top of the long, tiring stairway, after a long, long walk, you can hear the yelling of a large crowd and the refreshing smell of the open air. Many meters away, eclipsing parts of the bright sun as it glares towards you, is a crosshatch of metal like one wall of a gigantic cage. You can hear the excited chatter of a gigantic crowd which is sliced through by the loud whining of a cutthroat Jenkins. Silence! He screeches. Here they come! Oh, God, this was the plan all along. I hate him so much. Well, that's the element of surprise gone. We better greet our fans. Look, shut up and come out of your shitty hole. Hmm. Come in, you massive cock. Hello. Hello. You exit the stairway coming out of a hatch in the ground to see that you are in a portion of Higginbotham on sea which has been almost completely destroyed save for a few remaining walls and rafters. It has been portioned off by an overwhelmingly large domed cage that seems to pulse with electric magic. The dome is a thousand feet in circumference, around the size of a fighting pit. Similarly, various jagged implements are scattered around your feet. Surrounding the arena, you see many of the crudely dressed patchwork warriors that you saw earlier, all hungry for blood sport. Hanging from several thick chains at the top of the dome, you see a large crystal ball, and pictured on that ball is you. Every action that you make. That's right, we've been watching you the whole time! (laughs) Jenkins laughs, sitting on a crudely built throne outside the fighting pit. Next to him, a wizard wearing the same collar that you saw earlier, constantly waving his hands over a smaller crystal ball. Took you long enough, you pair of cons. Uh, look what I've done to my hometown. <laughs> hometown? More like really destroyed town. <laughs> oh yeah, good one. Oh 
man! That wasn't funny. This apocalypse has really been a good laugh, hasn't it, boys? Yes, really funny. Really, a large guffaw from me. Ha ha ha! I'll get my hands on you, Junkins. You gonna wish that you? Well, I ain't gonna tell you. It's a surprise, but uh, well, you won't get your hands on me because we've got little arena battle on our hands. Right. Was is that that shit over here? Yep. All the jaggedy weapons that you can have, and you three are gonna have a little battle. Can I try and lob um, the half sword at him? Sure. Give me a missile attack roll, please. 18. You hurl it in the direction of Jenkins. It flies through the air. It's completely on point. It heads for his face. And you know that it's going to go outside of this electric dome. And as it does so, it just pulses with magic energy and sends it flying back towards you. That's why I built the Jenker dome. There's no way you're getting out, boys. It's either fight the arena or go back down the dungeon. And what if we win your toy? Well... I guess you'll see about that, won't you? No, I'm the mysterious one, not you. <laughs> I don't think you're in a position to start making demands, you little shite bag. Right, bring on the man bat! As he says this, you see a small portion of the cage open, and Ramrod just pushes in a wheeled cage holding a gigantic half man, half bat creature, all muscle, giant wings, giant fangs just oozing with just saliva and grimness and this thing is screeching at you it just wants to be let free oh, and God. ramrod he just opens part of the cage and just legs it out of there just not wanting to even be near this oh, hideous God. beast everyone roll initiative oh, we're going to God. fight first up is going to be the man bat Okay, it swoops in and immediately go for Minor because uh. he's kind of the biggest <laughs> and he grabs for him and immediately starts to carry him off like a big bit of prey and he's going to try and sling him into the side of the cage trying to damage him as if breaking an egg against a wall. Uh. Put him down! And Minoc, you are going to need to give me an agility roll to try and get out of this thing's grasp. I've got um, 15 agility. Okay, so you do manage to get out of its grasp, oh, but you're already so high up that you fall to the ground. And as you hit into the sand below, you take five damage from the fall. Uh, <coughs> so you're now on one HP. Stop fucking around, just get up. Oh, this it was so painful. Next up is going to be Grimald. You can see the man bat circling you above. You just dropped my mate like a poo. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna pick up one of the jagged weapons and just try and launch it like a javelin. Yep, yeah, so give me a missile attack roll then. Cool. 14. Uh, one damage. You pick up this thing and it just barely nips it as it flies past. Next up is going to be Minoc. Yeah, I'm going to just pick up two weapons and throw both of them at it. Okay, yes, you have two action dice, so nice. roll both attacks. All right, five, two. You pick up two weapons and you throw them and they just launch through the air, hitting absolutely nothing. The man back dodges them exceptionally and they just do not manage to connect. Ugh. Next up, it's gonna be Wolseley, and you see him just go to grab a weapon, and he just, as he's running through the sand, it, it's, it's like his feet are just not used to this terrain, and he just skids, and he just hits the floor, and he's like, oh I'm used to wearing much more nice shoes. <laughs> Next up is going to be the man bat. He sees Wolseley like this uh, vulnerable prey and just swoops down, picking him up and manages to grab him in his talons and he's just flying towards the side of the arena. He smashes him into the side and breaks him like a big old melon. No. You see Wolseley just Ugh. smash oh. into this big old like wave of viscera sending blood raining down on all of them. Ah, you killed me boy! Oh dear. Oh dear. And you can see that now the man bat is sort of feasting on the innards of Wolseley. He does keep a wary eye on you two, but he is having a little munch. Okay, I'm going to. It is now Grimald's turn. It's fine, I'm going to try and uh, pick up another crudely built weapon and um, run at him and stab him. <laughs> Give me a melee attack roll, please. Uh, 15 for the first one, 18 for the second one. Uh, so six damage. You manage to actually run up and use these two jagged uh, metal weapons and slice into both sides of the man bat's neck. Nice. Oh, wow, good work. Okay, next up is going to be Minoc. 
I'll try and finish him off then, shall I? And I'm gonna try and grab the longest looking jagged weapon on the floor and then sort of run charge up and, and jam it in. Yeah, you find a pointy weapon on the floor. So go for it, give me a melee attack roll. 19. Four. Damage. And you see the thing screech in agony. This thing is quite obviously nearing death because you see that it is feeling unbelievably weak and you see it's like wings sort of sloping across the ground as it's trying to get away from you guys. Yeah. Who'd have thought it? These guys are actually giving the man bat a run for its money. All right, so next up is going to be the man bat. It tries to take a swipe at Grimmel okay. and misses completely. <laughs> its wing is just absolutely listless at this point. It can barely even move. So Grim, it is your turn now. Yes. All right. You destroyed the closest thing I ever had to a sad. Now you got pay, man bat. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna try and run in and just try and stab um, a pointy implement straight in his head. Uh, I got a 20, mate. So that is going to be a crit. Um, let's roll on the crit table. Savage attack, add plus 1d6 with this strike. You jam the thing right into the thing's head. You feel that it's a, definitely a hard thing to penetrate. But with all of your might, you jam it right down into the thing's skull and you feel it just like a big sort of massive bit of bone. It just crunches down and the thing just starts screeching but that eventually stops because you know that you've killed it. It slumps down and just skids across the ground like a big lifeless piece of meat. I'm just, I'm just screaming like Aah! The crowd is absolutely going wild and Jenkins is like The cult's absolutely did it! Oh my god! <laughs> you defeated the man bat! Oh man! You're next shit for brains! No, I'm not! No, I'm not! Because we've got something for you next, little boys! Freedom! <laughs> freedom! Yeah, freedom! It's actually freedom! Nope! Um, it's actually a death race! <laughs> death race! <laughs> uh, while, he's, while he's saying that, um, I was going to go and have a look over at the uh, at Woosley's corpse and see if I can find uh, the, the arrowhead. Yeah, Grimwood, you walk over and you see that the, the arrowhead is next to Woosley's half-eaten mangled corpse. I pick it up and I'm just like, this was his favourite toy. I gave it to him. <laughs> and I put it in my pocket. <laughs> Jenkins is like, what the hell are you doing? Nothing. Fuckhead. Please, don't call me names. All oh, right, so you want to throw us in here, kill me boy, throw a man bat at us, sling us in a death race, and you're worried that we might hurt your feelings well, with a bad wait, man. Wait, 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 hold on a minute. I haven't even put you in the death race yet. You shouted, death race! What is that? And now you're mocking me voice. No. I've always had people mocking me for me high voice. Well, it's a shit voice. you already got a shit voice. Your mum's got a shit voice. Oh. Oh. See, we're bringing the bones into it now. She's got a we? shit voice. You know why I know that? Because I had sex with her last night. Oh, 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 oh. She oh. was screaming my name, and it was so high pitched I knocked her out. I heard Ramrod's got involved. <laughs> Ramrod? Is this true? It's true. <laughs> he looks to his right, and he see you see the guy with the bucket on his head from earlier, um, and he's like, and Ramrod's just shaking his head, and he's like. All right, well, I was going to let you have the pick of the vehicles, you know, for the, for the race. Because we got, with the death race, basically the format is thus. You get a wagon, and you get one of the monsters that came out of the apocalypse, and, and you race. And if you die, you lose. Okay, that's the death race. And I was going to let you have a pick of the vehicles for entertainment's sake, but now I'm going to But you're you going to give us the best one. Because you know it's so crap. Funnily enough, I'm going to give you the worst one for saying that stuff about my mum. Your mum's a bitch. What if we don't want the worst one? Well, you don't have a choice, you fucks. Well, we're going to do the then. <laughs> anyway, bring on the vehicle. And you see that um, Ramrod gets off of the podium where he stood with Jenkins. And you see him sort of from the back of the podium, wheel round what looks to be like the sort of wagon that vegetables would have been kept on. <laughs> right? And at the front of it is like a sort of slimy looking monster with with four old haggard looking legs and a beak at the front. Oh, and and the, thing, the thing looks like it can barely stand. <laughs> it, is, it is wheezing and it looks at you and it's like... 
I'm gonna try stroke right. it. Were you were you in the dungeon as well? Is that why you're retching? I'm gonna try pet it like a dog. Okay, um, as you pet it, you feel some sort of slimy ooze come off in your hands. And he's like, you see, it's the worst one. Oh, don't be so horrible about him. He's the worst. I used him once. I crashed it. It's a piece of shit. That cart as well. We stole it from this very village. It sucks. What? And you're going to have to go up against your opponent. That's right, boys. It's going to be the best racer in the village. Your mum. I appreciate the comment, but no, it's going to be me. <laughs> That's right. It's me. And you're going to be going up against my vehicle. And you see outside the dome, a vehicle gets wheeled up. And it is a barbed black wagon. It is an absolute spectacle to behold. It is an amazing vehicle. Every single part of this wagon looks custom made. Oh my God. It, is, it is like the is made of pure mahogany mm -hmm. and every single piece of it is oiled to perfection painted with racing stripes barbed so you couldn't get near it even if you wanted to and it's got spikes on every single surface and the monster on front is the same breed of monster as the one on yours but it is so muscled that you wouldn't even recognize it as being the same thing. Yeah. And as, yeah. as you look at it, it just goes... <laughs> 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 Sounds better. I'm like, like, this is, this is my wagon. I it's got... the Turbo Man 5000. You're in for a fucking treat, boys. basically to the start of the race. You find that you're at the starting line and you're standing next to your cart. You can see Jenkins in his, his amazing Turbo Man 5000. You're outside in the desert wastes outside Higginbotham on sea. He's standing in his cart, gloating. The crowd are going wild and he's riling them up, doing hand gestures to get them going. Behind you, you can see Ramrod holding a dynamite, which is obviously to start the race and he's he's going to set it off and once that goes off you know the race is, is oh a go God. it's a go and I'm going to shout down to our monster and be like look mate you just try your best if you help us you can show that other monster wanker over there who's better <laughs> and also you get to sort that arsehole who put you in this mess in the first place I'm sure you just want to be free didn't you <laughs> yep exactly so help us help you and we're all, uh, we're all good alright Right? Nominate one driver and one rider. I, I, I don't even need a rider. I can shoot you guys and fuck you up myself. What's, what is, what's the difference? One, one person drives the car and the other one can like shoot me and stuff. But I, I'm gonna do all of that myself. Right, okay. Right. It's me and Woosley. I've named you Woosley, monster. After me, boy. It's me and Woosley. Mighty, you're on the back. Yes, I agree. So, Grimmel's gonna be the, 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 he's gonna drive the thing. Yeah. And Minoc, you're gonna be on the back. Y uh, yeah. All right then. So, on the count of three, Ramrod's gonna set off that dynamite and the race is gonna go. There's only one rule. And he points off into the distance and you can see a wall right off in the horizon mm -hmm. that's been built into the sand and he's like, if both of us reach that wall, we both die. But you gotta keep going. But you gotta kill the other guy before you reach the wall and you get to live. Oh. What happens to the other guy? Well, you get to stop because you've won. What's, what's well, the other one? Oh, he's dead. I'm not mighty quick with some rocks. Yeah, but, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna, gonna try and like shove a ton of rocks into the car. Yeah, you, you just shove a bunch of rocks into the back of your car, Perfect. and he's like, you know those are going to slow you down. Uh, weapons, though, aren't they? Not when you're eating them. <laughs> I've got a repeating crossbow. You think those are going to help? <laughs> we got rock shield. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. All right, 
three. Ow! Wait a minute. Ow! My back. Oh, my back. Oh, we need a oh, time out. Time out. One. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Death race. <laughs> and you hear the dynamite go off. He gets off to an amazing start. You see him just blast ahead of you. I'm gonna throw shit right now. Give me a missile attack roll, please. 19. 18. Both attacks are gonna hit. Five in total. Both rocks hit the car, but you see Ramrod behind you pointing a crossbow at you, and he's like, he's like, get on the car. Okay, Grimald, give me a um, intelligence roll to drive the car, please. 12. You managed to get off to quite a lackluster start. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just behind Cutthroat Jenkins, and he is absolutely loving this. You see him standing up in the back of his car, and he's just like, <laughs> this is the fucking best. Right, both of you roll initiative, please. First up on the order is going to be Minoc. Yes. All right, I'm going to do exactly what I did before and chuck two rocks at him. 13 and 13. <laughs> So both rocks that you throw just miss completely. Ah. And he dodges his car out of the way and he's like, see, you don't do no, rocks don't get you nowhere. <laughs> and next up is going to be Jenkins. You see him turn around and fire a crossbow, but he doesn't fire it at either of you. He fires it at your monster. No. But <sighs> you notice that as he's trying to turn his wagon, that he's concentrating on that too much and the actual um, bolts from his crossbow fire into the sand and miss your monster and fire. Yes! yes. And he's like, Paracons! Next, <laughs> next up is going to be Grimald. Uh, I'm going to try and um, yeah, on the reins and see if I get my uh, monster to pick up the pace. Yep, give me a strength roll, I'm going to please. shout down to the monster and be like, that's the piece of shit that's, uh, that's caused all your suffering. If we can take him out, you'll be free, I promise you. Okay, uh, yeah, give me a strength roll. Strength roll. Ten. Yeah, you whip it and it goes ever so slightly faster. You're catching up a little bit, but okay. not quite. All right. um, you can see that you're you're gaining on Jenkins just mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's not quite enough to close the gap for you to get close enough. However, um, next up is going to be Minoc again. Man. Yeah, double rock throw. 16 and a 21. <laughs> I uh, got two. These rocks hit him in the back, hitting his patchwork leather armor. And as you hit him, they just thud him in the back. And he's, he's like, you're going to have to try harder than that. Noted. Jenkins then turns around, looks at Minoc, giving you a deathly stare. He even lets go of the reins for a little bit, tying them on a little um, outcropping on the front of his wagon. And he just he runs to the back of his car, points a crossbow at Minoc and fires. Oh. You actually go down so, and you fall off the back of the wagon, slinking into the sand. Oh. And you are now left behind as Grimald races forward. Mighty no! Grimald, it is now going to be your turn. And mm. Jenkins is cackling at the at the loss of your friend as you leave him in the dust. Okay, so I'm going to try and um, push my monster even harder, try and close the gap between me and Jenkins' car and then I'm just going to try and leap onto the cart because I'm in a rage now. Print first? Yes, please. Uh, that's a 17. Yep, with a 17, you whip the monster into shape and this thing is like... <laughs> and you just close the gap. Your shitty little cart just absolutely <laughs> smashing it through the desert. And you are now level with, with Cutthroat Jenkins. He's like, what the fuck? So I'm going to try, uh, tie the reins and then get onto the jump onto the back of the wad wagon and then just try and leap onto Jenkins' wagon. Okay, Jenkins' wagon is so unbelievably barbed mm -hmm. that you would never even be able to do this with an agility roll, so you're going to need to give me a luck roll to do this. <sighs> Jesus. 17. That's you awesome. leap forward, <laughs> yeah. and as you do so, you catch your foot on the side of your own wagon, making you do an accidental front flip, and you just <laughs> fall onto Jenkins' wagon. Yes! That is your entire turn, but you are now face to face with this evil man. Fucking like, good holy one. shit, I didn't know you were a fucking acrobat! Good <laughs> Okay, work. we're in trouble now! It's a lot done about me! Your monster is now running side by side with Jenkins' car, and you are now on his cart standing right next to him. Okay, next up is going to be Jenkins. Go, he turns around, pulls a knife, and tries to stab you with right. it. Unfortunately, he actually misses. He's so surprised by your attack that he lets loose the knife and it falls onto the ground with a crit fail. Um, now it is going to be your turn, Grimmel. Who told you your knife skills, you mum? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll give you that one. Now give me that blade before you hurt yourself. And I'm going to try and grab the blade from the floor. 
you pick up the blade. So give me a melee attack roll, please. That's 15, mate. That's a four, mate. Four damage to him as you stab him right in the side of the neck. And he's like, ah! This wasn't supposed to go like this! And he's actually left his monster unattended, so this thing starts swerving out of control. You and Jenkins are both gonna need to get oh do god. agility rolls to stay on board. Oh okay. god. 15. Oh my god. Okay. He too gets a 15. Whoa. And you two are now standing there, just bracing the sides of this wagon, and you are both just about holding on. And he's got his um, repeating crossbow in his hand now, okay. and he's pointing it at you. And he is going to take a shot. He manages to get a crit on you. He actually only does one damage no with way. this attack. Yeah. However, Shut up. he actually smashes you right in the hand. Somehow the adrenaline makes you not feel the damage, but Bobby. your left hand is reduced to formless tissue. <gasps> oh, future, ha future attacks with that hand will be at a minus four penalty. No! What have you done to me, hands? And he's like, take that, you piece of shit. Nobody gets in my wagon without a ticket. And then he braces himself, readying himself for an attack. His fists coming up to guard his face. So, all right, well, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna lunge at him with the blade. Yep, okay, give me an attack, a melee attack roll, please. 16. Yes. damage. That's a free. So you take the knife out of his neck and then just stab him again in the guts. And nice. he's like, ah, ah, oh, the only guts. I need those. <laughs> I might not be good at much, but I'm good at this. I've tried to get away from it, but you've pushed my hand. Grim, I'm warning you, you you're bad. Person, my insults aren't working. I'm feeling lightheaded. And you can see now that the wall that you were heading towards is approaching. He's like, if one of us doesn't win this race soon, we're both fucking dead. Or we could just stop and both survive. Nobody's stopping, you prick. And he fires the repeating crossbow, but he's now wavering so much that, that the bolts just fly into the air. He just shoots it upwards and he's like, ah, ah criminal. I always knew I was gonna kill you and I ain't going down like this. And now it's Grimald's turn. Okay, how close are we to the wall? You've got about 12 seconds before <laughs> it's gonna hit. You've hurt me, friend. He fell off me wagon. You've, you've uh, insulted me. You've turned me hand into al <laughs> Now you've got to meet your maker. Um, and then I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going in again with the knife. Okay, here we go. <laughs> 20, mate. So that's a crit. Roll on the crit table. <laughs> Blow to cranium staggers foe. The foe must make a fortitude save or sink to the floor unconscious. Uh, yes. <laughs> Jenkins does not make his fortitude save. <laughs> you smash him with the side of your dagger and you see him just sink to the floor unconscious. Kalaboom. You have only six seconds before his wagon is going to hit the fucking wall. Give me a reflex save to see if you can jump off in time. Oh my God. All right, cool. Please God. Come on, come on. Oh, 18, mate. Okay. You just about managed to jump off just before you hit the wall. Jenkins, the monsters, both carts smash into the end wall of the death race. Oh, no. It is an absolute miasma of blood, wood, spikes, viscera, monster bits. Jenkins has ended, his unconscious body smashing unceremoniously against this wall, and the bricks come tumbling down, killing him, crushing him beneath. <sighs> Grimald, you are now standing there in the wastes. In the distance, you can see the Jenka Dome, and you can see all these cheering fans looking at you from beyond. But between you and the Jenka Dome, you see the lifeless body of your friend sitting there. I'm like, first, I, well, but first of all, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'd shout at the mess that was Jenkins. I'm just like, have that, yeah, rotten potato. And then I turn around and I'm like, oh, shit, Mino. I just go running after him to try and get him. You run up to Minoc and he is completely unresponsive in any way, shape or form. Mino, Mino, wake up, wake up. Oh, my God, is that blood coming out of his ear? Right, okay, let's go. I'm going to pick him up. As you pick him up, Nothing appears to be happening to him. Uh, oh my god. Uh, I'm just going to walk back towards the dome then with him, I suppose. I'm holding him in my arms like a baby. You've got quite a fair bit to go because obviously you are racing back on cars. Yeah. Yeah. You can see that the people are completely unsympathetic. They're just cheering. They're cheering your victory, but they, they appear not to care. I'm like, somebody day. save him! Help me! Why are you still clapping? Ah! And that's where we'll end today's adventure. <laughs>
So that was a, a new adventure which <laughs> I called Death Race Cutthroat. That was the first adventure we played in this series that was not a pre-published module because mm. obviously we couldn't do a pre-published module for that because there wasn't one that exists. No. So yeah, uh, what did you guys think? Brilliant. Uh, again, again, as always, I always comment after everyone. It was all, it was intense as ever. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't do my nerves any good us doing these, as fun as they are. <laughs> I tell you what, it's, it's actually a good thing Shake that we've it. recorded today's session in the evening because now I'll probably sleep well. Because oh, usually yeah. after after the morning session, I'm quite fatigued. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you're, now you're quite tucking out. Yeah. I mean, that was pretty horrible. Oh, I, man. I hated the fact that mine up went down so easily. Like mm. right at the beginning of the race, because yeah. his rock throwing was brilliant. To be honest, that was that was a very right. handy thing. Because the one thing I, I didn't expect was you know because because um, Jenkins' wagon had all the barbs on. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was kind of to me that was the puzzle of it. I was like, well, how are they going to attack? Because uh-huh. I expected you guys to maybe fashion some gear, find some gear, something like this. Yeah. But then when you guys got on and like, had no gear, I was like, well, they're fucked. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> they're gonna win yeah. Yeah. Or maybe they were going to try and ram him or something well, like that. Was, that was what I was thinking, maybe ramming or little. <laughs> See, I was, what I originally tried to do when I was shouting out my back was I was going to hopefully try and have him be distracted by me. And then I was going to try and motion to you to stealth up and try and go around his back and just backstab him. Oh, nice. Yeah. But he didn't stop, so no. I couldn't couldn't even no, but that's tr- attempt him, though, that. Man, he's such an arrogant, like, Jenkins, obnoxious yeah. prick. And um, one of the things was as well was that that yeah, as I said, there was going to be a selection of vehicles. <laughs> but considering how, <laughs> how, how much jokes. of a, how much of a dick you yeah. being, like, being like, I just I, I knew it was going to happen. Yeah, but right? he's a dick, so I couldn't. Well, I thought he was a fiend. No, to be fair, be and he gonna that's, that was good role playing because the fact of the matter is, is that you were so hurt and so annoyed that mm-hmm. it was like, well, what would you do? You yeah. know. You, yeah, wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't relent because you didn't know you were going to have a selection of vehicles. No, that's right. You know, I killed Grim's son, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, it was so <laughs> funny. It was so funny how you embraced Wolseley so massively. He says, like, oh, oh, you the killed the closest son. thing I ever had to a son. That's Wolves. just Grimmy, man. He's just a funny old uh, thing, isn't man, he? That was fun. That was fun. So I, I was, it was properly nerve-wracking. I'd, uh, and you know what? I felt like... Um, it was annoying because you guys didn't necessarily have a chance to heal. And I, I thought that... One of the things was that I did uh, I did think that like I was going to give you a chance to heal in the prison and all of this stuff, right. but um, it it didn't really make a lot of sense because why would he? He's he's a brutal, horrible, yeah. Well, yeah, of horrible course. horrible You've man. Got to keep and, the realism, man. It's um, yeah. no, it was, it's, it was that's part of the you know it was it was intense, but boy, it was exciting. Yeah, that was like, fun. Do you know what I mean? Well, I had fun playing. I hope the listeners right? enjoyed it. Oh, me too. Yeah. Um, speaking of listeners, yes. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do this. How do they do it, Nick? Well, they can uh, email us, which is tabletoptwats at gmail.com. Or they can check out our Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash tabletop T. And of course, we have a Twitter, which is at tabletop twats. Certainly. Don't um, forget the Nerds International Community and Google Plus. Mm-hmm. And if you want to sling us a buck, then go over to patreon.com forward slash tabletop twats. I think that's it anyway. Yep, it is. It is. Yep. But speaking of Patreon, just thank you for our two new ones that we had on today's um, episode. Which was M. Woosley, which was um, <laughs> Nirael Woosley. Yep. And, of course, Apollo Hogan. Hogan Apollo yes. Hogan. Which was the, uh, which is God, the, the poor orc yeah. who got his head blown off. The poor orc with his, with his bad dead family. They're definitely dead. Well, we don't know. Oh, God. Come no, on, they're dead. Don't, don't know, Come on, they don't defi- know. Look, they are. It will make me feel better. Where my daddy? If oh, they're dead. <laughs> It could be the one kind that Jenkins ever did, you don't know. Ah, they're in the crowd. No, don't do this to us. No, don't. Yeah, come on. But yeah, anyway. Find out next time, listeners. So yeah, if you want to be a character on the show, what you can do is donate on Patreon Mm -hmm. and we will make you into a character in this show. Damn right. Anyway, yeah, thank you for listening, everyone, and we will see you next time. Ciao, fellas. Goodbye, everyone. Good day. Cool tables in a fantasy universe. What a merry shape. What will these guys think of next? Well, tune in next time to the Forum Beggars to find out. Goodbye.